Oh, yeah, but well, they asked me to, and I'm just going to few notes here. Um, and um, I just wanted to say, uh, first of all, I wanted to say how brief I'm going to be. Because you all remember endless speeches I used to make in the storms behind me. My memory of you guys on the radio is talk to each other. So I promise you I'm going to be very, very brief. But I do want to do say a um, few things. First of all, I want to thank everybody who put tonight together. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, yeah. And those people are, uh, well, there are lots of people, but Vanessa in particular and Kelvin and George Walker. And I want to thank Kerry uh, Fitz Dunn for uh, helping finance it. This fantastically rich businessman that he should run this shop, pay him at least double what it is. <laughs> and he's completely transformed it into something which is as good as the very best of Oscar. So, congratulations. It's an amazing shop. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, it's been 10 years, and 10 years does seem to fly by very, very quickly. It sort of feels like only yesterday that. Um, Matilda was patiently explaining to me how to run a company. Obama Trump. Ten years since I was having to tell you sorry and that you couldn't do on being quite so rude. To <laughs> <laughs> um, Joe James. Explaining to me that uh, the octopus band no, it couldn't play four sets worth of <laughs> One was quite enough. Um, uh, it was. It's been ten years where so much has happened, uh, and but there's also so much to remember. I mean, my memories are fantastic because I'm a writer now, and I sit at this desk, and above me I've got this huge mosaic until the did for me of everybody's faces um, from octopus, and they're all doing different things at different times. And um, I look at it um, quite a lot because that's what writers do. And when I do, I quite often, you know, I don't know whether those of you remember when Matilda, not Matilda, Vanessa, made that film of R.E.M. Shiny Happy People. <laughs> yes. It was, it was a glossy and yet marvelous. <laughs> 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 of an Oscar's conference when uh, we grin. But actually, it does come into my mind. Shiny Happy People literally looks at these incredibly happy. And I. And, and, and the memories I have then are as much audio as they are visual. I remember um, Big Steve's laugh. I remember Gaylord's smile. Let's go. Oh, that's smile. That's smile. I remember Kelvin's the mellifluous tones of the ballet. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Vanessa's sort of slow shake of the head and cross the board shake. That's sort of another preposterous idea. I remember Fiona Noble looking in astonishment at Wayne when he presented yet another Nancy. I remember Philip Dunn rock and rolling. I mean, he was a really good rock and roller. He still is, I suppose. I know. At the manager's conference, I had no idea he was that good. I remember Maureen and Pam, Pam Lamb here. Probably, are you with me? You, you, apart from me, you're the first person who ever joined us. Oh, yes. So Maureen, let's hear it for guys. Maureen, coming all the way down from London. I remember you. Looking down at a really burnt hamburger, I'd serve you. There's some of Marty's and Bubbles. Food poisoning. I remember Cheryl Mendham looking down at me after an extraordinary game of football where I dislocated my shoulder. She takes. Sorry, that was Sorry. You introduced. 
use the, the, the word shit cakes. <laughs> <laughs> to yeah. use the show. Yeah, and I was there, and they put me out, and I was lying there, and I opened my eyes, and there was Cheryl looking down. <laughs> I'd been out for some time, and she said, do you know you just asked me to marry you? <laughs> and are making it much better. I mean, Helen, is Helen Dance here tonight? No. Mm. Oh, God, she wants to be here tonight. Yeah. She's very, very sad. But George Walkley is here. Yay! 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 Helen and George are pretty much like that. Because they're my publishers. Um, Paul Anderson sadly isn't here today, but he is the premier baker of, um, of, of, of uh, Salisbury. Those of you who tasted his bread will know it is absolutely amazing. Um, Helen uh, Stickland, as she is now, rock star, Paul Arnfield, rock star. <laughs> Wayne Winstone, new retail tycoon. <laughs> He's slightly more morals than Philip Green, I suspect. <laughs> <laughs> Looked at the pension fund. Excuse me, I'm, I'm advising him. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
I'm now a student in the industry, but I'm on the other side. I'm on the, on, on the author side. And um, it is amazing how many people still come up to me and say, what you guys did was a great, great thing. And I think it really was great. I mean, I think we, we what, what did we do? We, 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 we came up with the idea that you could be a chain bookseller as well as being an independent bookseller. And if you look on Wikipedia, we put up articles, it says, famous for the fact that most people in most towns thought their articles was an independent. I say that that was a fantastic achievement. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the fact that people they had all of those fantastic you know, enthusiasm for books, really good stuff, who knew what they were talking about, you know, backed up by systems that worked, you know, fantastic marketing. We really, really struck that at the time that it did. And we affected Waterstones. They went off a cliff after they bought us, and they went off even a greater cliff with Dawn. But they come back bit by bit by bit. And the extraordinary thing is that they, and I see Dawn every year for lunch, and year by year, they're just back embracing what it is that we did. And it's extraordinary. And they'll come back full circle to what we did. So we should be really, really proud of that. And the same Wikipedia thing described us as, um, as uh, I think they say, as a, like a religious cult. <laughs> <laughs> more, more, more I, I was one who put it on Wikipedia. Yeah, did you? Yeah. <laughs> We were a great community. We, we, we all looked after the, um, each other uh, in a big way, particularly the shops that got their staff, and I think we should all be proud of that. Um, and I want to take this opportunity of sending you how much I miss you all and thanking you. Thank you for giving me the. I go as well up there. Thank you for <laughs> the best years of my life, which I will never forget. And tonight, let us toast friendship. Friendship! <laughs> <laughs> I've never ever met a politician who won't take up an invitation to, speak <laughs> to a captive audience. Uh, thank you, James. Um, I don't have a ministerial car, and more is the pity. I've just come into the Ministry of Health from the Defence Department, and the Minister of Defence has 16 magnificent drivers at the disposal of the ministerial team. And in health, we have one. And I didn't think I could come into the department at a time with some challenge financially and say, uh, What about, how am I going to get around? All this so I don't. Uh, and I'd like that to go out far and wide. <laughs> <laughs> we look after your money very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> so, James is, uh, is, is, uh, is a, an extraordinary, inspirational person, and we've all had the benefit of, uh, of working with him for. Know, some disparate parts of time, and uh, I think it's a great loss to the retail trade and to sort of to, and to all of us that James has decided to go off and, uh, and work on his own these days rather than inspiring others. But as he, he touched on the uh, the festival at Chalk Valley, which he uh, he has been running for the last few years, which I had the uh, immense privilege of speaking at last summer, and it, although we were the, we were a bit light on audience the day that I turned up because they had about four inches of rain the night before. And so it was a quagmire. Of, it was actually a history, re it's all a history <laughs> So it was reenacting the First World War, and boy, did it do it. Um, but I, I had immense fun in doing that. And regrettably, James, of all the people who were speaking over the eight, how many days? Seven or eight days. He opted not to come to the uh, the talk that I gave, <laughs> <laughs> and I weren't <laughs> 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 we the opportunity to invite me back next summer. Because I really enjoyed it. It was fantastically good fun. And if you haven't been to it, you happen to have time and a very effective pair of Wellington boots. I strongly uh, to go. So um, I, articles for me, just if I can give you a little personal reminiscence, and I won't go on. It. As long as James did. Um, for me, it's been the most incredible uh, learning curve. So, we, the idea for Autocruz was absolutely 100% James's, but it wouldn't have happened if he hadn't decided to quit his job and had nowhere to spend his day uh, to work out how to turn it into a bookshop. So, I happened to have a spare room in my flat. Uh, and he came to, can you imagine how horrific this was, for about a year and a half, he would turn up at my flat as I was going out to work, and I'd get back, and there he was, still in the flat, <laughs> <laughs> all day doing whatever he was doing, all day he was doing, for a year and a half, but 
Nein. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk to. <laughs> but it was so for for 18, for 19 years, 18 years of trading and a year and a bit of pre-trading, we spoke to each other every day. For a number of those years, I was living in Hong Kong and we didn't quite speak every day, but we spoke a lot. And you don't build up that kind of bond of working together without it having you know, a major impact on, uh, on, on how you, you know, you, it, osmosis means that some of James' enthusiasm, I think, may have hopefully rubbed off on me. It was the most fantastic experience. I have blatantly used this through the life that I went on to in politics to say that it means that having had, it's the only thing that's given me sleepless nights in my life. I guaranteed the rent of the first shop in Brighton and at least for two reasonably long periods in the formative years, there was every chance that uh, the Brighton shop was going to bring the company down and I'd have to start paying the rent. Out. <laughs> at that particular time when I signed the lease, the rent in Brighton was within about £2,000 of my then annual salary. So it was a very, very formative commitment that I was putting in. Uh, and the sort of mad thing that you do as a sort of wannabe entrepreneur to try and get a business going. And from that experience, it has allowed me to be able to talk to people who are in business, trying to set up business, uh, and with, with a degree of understanding and empathy about the challenges that we all have to go through in, uh, in doing that kind of thing. So it's been, for me, an incredibly formative part of uh, what's become my life. And, and it's mostly down to all of you for making it happen. It was a tremendous journey. We all had a lot of fun. Uh, I'm really pleased to hear some of the stories that you've been telling me this evening about what you've all been up to since. I hope you all thought it was a worthwhile part of your careers. Thank you for it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.